Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah dear viewers welcome back to the final segment of today's episode the 16th episode when we are covering science we've got plenty of uh, interesting uh, bits uh, uh, on science uh, we covered on the first segment um, biology and in biology we had um, plants and um, how plants live on live on and other things uh, from plants we had some questions and we can see that no student dares come uh, to come forward with the answer so far. However, uh, I would like to ask a very interesting question which links back to the uh, mm -hmm. previous segment. And uh, perhaps my dear brothers and sisters, they will benefit from this question who have their uh, something on their dieting plant. Okay. Plant that, for example, mm -hmm. uh, if you consume vegetable oil, will that help you to get rid of fat if you consume when you consume? Uh, animal or oil fats mm. uh, which has uh, plenty of fat, fat is there any difference yeah. between these two types of oil sure yeah you, uh, actually th there is uh, there are differences between uh, f fats and oils that you might find in animals and oils that you might find in plants so often when we let's say cooking meat um, you will find that the fat of the meat you know it produces like a oily just to add something yeah. you know uh, olive oil yes olive oil is definitely uh, free from uh, fats, yeah. as far as I know, and it is it is uh, quite uh, safe uh, in terms of uh, yeah. uh, health. But what about other uh, oils like sunflower oils or mm -hmm. vegetable oils? Yeah, I mean, there's still um, a lot of research goes on about which oil is the healthiest. Um, but actually, what's important is that you do need some fats um, in order for uh, to have a healthy diet, and so eating meat some meat in uh, moderation is also important and is, is useful because these fats and these oils contain certain chemicals that are also useful for our body but you're right too much of these fats and these oils are going to be unhealthy um, similarly there are oils like olive oil like you mentioned is actually good for um, your body good for breaking down cholesterol let's say and other types of oil like sunflower oil vegetable oils these will be more healthier than using more fatty type of um, oils that might also come from whether plants or let's say even butter. So sometimes, we, you know, even in our culture, we know we sometimes we cook with ghee, and so this produces uh, can be ghee, ghee is dangerous. <laughs> yeah, so it can be quite a quite a fatty su substance uh, if you use too much of it. Of course, it was important that in terms of diet wise that we always have a balanced diet, a healthy diet. Zakallah, and yeah. I can see that you have plenty of things. We don't want to roll on <laughs> this sure, <laughs> oil. Absolutely. So perhaps you've got the idea that you can uh, put on your dieting plan uh, this uh, vegetable oil or olive oil uh, that's much healthier than uh, any fat, uh, any animal oil which is uh, uh, full of fat. So let's ask questions on physics. Okay, transverse waves. How do they do look like? Okay, transverse waves. So, um, what we're going tell to us first of all, what is that? Transverse waves. Okay, um, s a wave in itself is a way of transferring energy. So, energy um, can be transferred in different forms, and one of the forms that energy can be transferred is through a wave. And actually, for students and their GCSEs, they need to know there are two main types of wave. One is called a transverse wave and the other one is called a longitudinal wave. Mm. And to give an example of a uh, transverse wave, well, if we look at um, slide 26. Mm. A see slide 26, yeah. Yeah, a simple transverse wave is just a wave, in fact, in water, a water wave. A water wave is an example of a transverse wave. But there are other examples of transverse wave as well, such as a microwave, you know, we use this for our mobile phones. We use it for cooking. Tell, tell me about, uh, clarify these things. Though. How does a wave generate? Why are you calling it wave? Okay, so a wave is... I want to go deep into the basics. <laughs> okay, well, yeah. a, a wave is to do with how um, the particles are carrying the energy. Okay. Okay, how the particles are carrying the energy. And when we talk about transverse wave, they carry, they move in a particular way which we'll look at, 
-hmm. and longitudinal waves move in a slightly different way. Should we go? We'll do you want to go into longitudinal this? Longitudinal data. Okay. Remember, tell us about uh, transverse waves okay. and how do they look like? Right. So if we want to look at transverse wave in particular, then if we look at slide 27. Next slide. Slide. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what we see here is that a transverse wave that the particles move um, up and down. Mm -hmm. We say they move at a right angle to the direction of the travel or the direction of the movement of the wave. So it's a bit difficult for us to really um, s uh, understand what this means unless we can demonstrate it. But the diagram there kind of gives us an idea of what's happening is that this uh, slinky here in the diagram is moving up and down, but the wave itself is moving from left to right. Okay, so the direction of the travel of the wave is going to be um, to the right, but the parts of the slinky or the spring is actually moving up and down. So where are these waves traveling through? So in this case, in the example of uh, on the slide, it was they're traveling through the spring okay. or the slinky as they ca mm -hmm. we call it. And in, an, in the earlier case, what we looked at was the water wave. So in that situation, the energy was moving by through the water. What about metals? So uh, you can have uh, energy moving through metals. That's possible. If, if we give an example of, let's say, sound. So if I was to hit a metal door with a hammer, I will hear on the other side of the door a, a sound. And so that energy... And that generates a wave. Yes, exactly. And that generates sound a wave. wave. It's a sound wave. Okay. It's a sound wave. And what we said before, that in this case, the type of wave is not transverse, but a sound wave is actually longitudinal. longitudinal. That's so right. let's go to language longitudinal uh, wave. We have just uh, learned about parts of uh, trans waves. Yeah. Tell us about longitudinal wave. Okay, so a longitudinal wave, if we look at um, slide 37, we can now see, hopefully, the difference between the transverse and the longitudinal wave. Here in slide 37, we can see the spring. Mm -hmm. What's happening is that you're moving it backwards and forwards. Mm -hmm. And the actual. That means you're pulling. You're pulling and, and you're pushing, yeah. Pulling, pushing. Exactly. Okay. And so what's happening now, again, you will see that the wave will travel from left to right. But this time, you won't see it going up and down. Instead, you will see that parts of the spring will come together and parts of the spring will spread apart. And so those parts that come together, we call compressions. And the parts of the spring that move apart, we call rare refractions. Okay, rare refractions. That's right. So again, these are all key terms students have to know for their exam. So mind those key terms, like I said before that. If you are struggling on those key terms, uh, definitely you, you are letting down yourselves in order to go down with really, really horrible uh, grades. So do call us on 0207096-0405 and join uh, our show with your answers. Now go to uh, question, uh, another question is frequency of trans waves. Tell us about, uh, let's go back to trans waves. Okay. We'll uh, combine with trans sure. waves and yeah. longitude in other no waves. Problem, yeah. That should um, uh, g g get us a flow of doing our work uh, nicely. No so tell us about frequency of trans waves. Okay, so frequency uh, is a term that we can apply to transverse waves and we can also apply it to longitudinal waves. And frequency, what this means, is, a, is, is the meaning is like what it sounds. Frequency means how often something happens. And so when we're talking about frequency of a wave, we mean how often does that wave occur in one second. So if a wave occurs once in one second, we say it has a frequency of one and the units that we use is called one hertz. And if, uh, if, if the wave occurs, let's say, ten times in one second, then we say it has a frequency of ten hertz. Okay, let me ask a question, a hypothetical question. For example, you have thrown a stone uh, into a pond or a pool and the there'll be uh, ripples, mm -hmm. ripples that will create a very nice, Wave. you know, um, uh, charming Wave. ripples. Yeah. So what are those uh, ripples or waves can be defined by your definitions as you have just uh, clarified? Okay. Yeah, so 
if you throw a stone into a pond, you see the ripples uh, moving uh, the water. Mm -hmm. So those waves are going up and down and the water is moving from the middle out. So this is now going to be a transverse wave. Okay. And if I was to look at a particular point uh, on, on, the, on the pond, and if I was to measure how many ripples are going past this point each second, if there are five ripples, one, two, three, four, five, they go past that point, then I would say that it has a frequency of five hertz. Okay. okay. So depending on how many waves go past in one second, that's going to be its frequency. Okay, okay. That's, that's, that's very uh, clear mm. and very good. Yeah. Jazakallah. So, <coughs> frequency activity. Tell us something about frequency activity. How do you define it? Uh, how do you explain to us with examples? If you have slides, feel mm -hmm. free to. Uh, yeah, uh, well, let, let's have a look at slide 34. Slide 34. So, here, this is the frequency of the understand frequency a little bit better so here we have different examples and if any students would like to phone in and uh, give their answers to this, so this uh, is a question yeah yeah this is a question okay, this is a question put forward for you so look at the question and uh, note it down or you can uh, capture it in your smartphone and okay. afterwards you can answer yeah so we would like to yeah, we knew that students are preparing for their GCSEs however you can spend your time on, on this uh, show and this, 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 this is beneficial. You won't uh, be you know, disheartened. You won't be actually let down by our show today, inshallah. We'll, we have designed our show, uh, keeping uh, bearing, bearing in our mind uh, the GCSEs, upcoming GCSEs. So, shall I explain the uh, activity? Yeah, please, could you please? Yeah, so, please first one, let's say A. The question here is, what time does this picture show? So, in this picture, I can see that there are two waves. And it has a frequency of two. So what time span am I measuring there in A? In B, I have to decide how many waves are there in B. Here the time is five seconds and the frequency is two. So how many waves are there going to be in each um, uh, in this time, time frame of five seconds? And the, the, the um, empty boxes are question marks, isn't it? Exactly. The okay. empty box are question marks and at the bottom there are also some uh, possible answers that students can pick from. Some of the questions there are a little bit more difficult than others, but if they um, think about it, so this is for a higher level student, they may be able to um, solve that particular problem. So dear, my dear students, uh, if you want to see your name on our list as one of the successful students who are answering those questions, inshallah, we will put your name and we will award you 10 marks. Come up with your answers. Let's go <coughs> to the longitudinal waves. Now we have uh, learned a little bit of longitudinal wave. Give some more light on longitudinal waves and also tell us about how they look like. Okay, great. So maybe if we, um, we can also look at uh, slide 38. It gives us a better understanding of what a longitudinal, longitudinal wave looks like. So slide 38. So 38. here we can see the example of the compression and the rare refraction. The compression is the part of the wave coming together and the rare refraction is the part of the wave that is moving apart. And you know we just like transverse waves we can name some very common transverse waves. We can also name um, some examples of longitudinal waves. And sound wave is probably the most common and easiest example of a sound wave. So when we are speaking now and somebody is listening to us even at home, the way that our waves are traveling or going to travel from the TV to their ears is through longitudinal wave. And this is because this, the air particles are moving backwards and forwards until it reaches their ears. That's why sometimes it goes up and down. Yeah, so depending on if, okay. they, uh, <laughs> if the amplitude is loud, okay. then there will be uh, more energy and the sound will be louder. And if the amplitude is low, then there will be less energy and the sound that they will what hear is, will be lower. What is this amplitude? As we have just mentioned the okay. word amplitude. Tell us about amplitude. Okay, sure. So amplitude is what we call the size of the wave. Or you could say how big the wave is. Or you could does say, it, does it affect uh, the journey of the uh, of the waves? Yeah, it affects it because it 
it tells you how much energy that wave is going to carry. If a wave has a high amplitude, then it will be a loud wave. And we know that loud waves carry a lot of energy. Even if you were to listen to a really loud wave, then it could even um, damage your hearing. And so if the amplitude is loud, it carries a lot of energy, and you will hear it like a louder sound, a louder wave, if I'm talking about mm. a sound wave. But you could have a la high amplitude of a transverse wave as well. Mm -hmm. It just means that it's got more energy is being carried with it. Mm -hmm. And it's important that students are able to label the different parts of the wave. So if we look at um, slide 31, we can show what exactly um, or, or how we would label the amplitude on a wave, on a transverse wave. And you can see here as in uh, on the slide that you measure the amplitude from the middle to the very top or from the middle to the very bottom. And this is a measurement of amplitude. Okay. Okay. This is a good example of amplitude. So simulation of <coughs> longitudinal waves. Mm -hmm. What is the simulation of longitudinal waves? How do you uh, describe? Yeah, so by simulation we mean like how would we explain what a, a longitudinal wave is. And the best way to think about it is where the particles are coming closer together in some parts and are moving apart in other parts. So this is going to be like a, a longitudinal wave, how um, the wave moves. Mm -hmm. and, and so these are, like we've said before, mm. where it comes close together, we call these compressions, and where it moves apart, we call these rare refractions. So it has a length actually, we can say wavelength? Yeah, so and what does it mean? Yeah, so wavelength is going to be the distance between one compression and the next compression. Or if I'm talking about transverse wave, I could say the distance between the very peak of the wave and the next peak. So from peak to peak or from the very bottom of the wave to the next bottom, which is what we call the trough and the trough. So again, it's important that students are able to make all of these labels. And we have an example here. If we were to look at um, slide, let's have a look, slide 30. 30 to 30. 30. So we can see um, the la wavelength is being labeled here. Okay, so the distance from one wave um, to the next wave. If we have a look at slide 28, then we can see um, the peak labeled and we can see the trough lab labeled. So all of these labels are so important. So one was 30 and other was The uh, other one 28. was 28, yes. And this one is 28, okay. So a student has to be able to uh, label the different parts of a wave and explain what those different parts mean as well. Uh, and again, they, ha they, they have to read and they have to learn very well the basic concepts. The basically the def definitions and the terms of uh, the science science so now do you have any other questions uh, for the students okay um in terms of questions um, what we can look at is how do you now calculate the speed of a wave how do you calculate the speed so this is this can be a question that will often come up in the exam and there is an important equation that students need to learn and sometimes the equation will be given in the exam paper, it's like a, on the equations list, mm -hmm. but they have to know how to use that equation. So if we were able to look at slide 44, we can give the equation to work out the wave speed. So to work out the wave speed of a wave, you have to multiply the frequency by the wavelength. And it's important that students again know... So there is some maths involved here? Yeah? Exactly, there is some maths involved. They need to be able to do the multiplications and also they need to sometimes be able to rearrange the equation if they are asked to work out, um, let's say, a, a part like the wavelength and they've given the speed and they're given the frequency. So rearrangement is important but also being able to do the calculation is important for them. That's why I think that sometimes uh, it's quite difficult for a student, for someone to no, uh, not uh, uh, loving uh, maths and uh, again they love uh, science. 
They have to love both subjects because they've got a very good connections to each, uh, each other. Oh, absolutely, they're yeah. Compli yeah compliment complimentary to each other, science and maths. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are coming to the end of the show very shortly. Mm -hmm. Again, could you uh, review those things about the guidance? So my dear view viewers, uh, brothers and sisters, and ch children in particular who are preparing for their GCSEs, we will uh, know something uh, from our teacher today, how to prepare for your GCSEs. And the teacher will highlight, as the teacher has already covered, a few very vital points on prepare, pre preparing. How can you prepare shortly with plans and preparations? Could you please tell us more briefly about these things? Sure. So all of these topics that we talked about today, um, it's important that students look into their revision guides. They f check, you know, which parts they already know, which parts they need to learn better. They can then um, make new notes on those parts. They can get someone else to test them. They can also watch videos about some of these things. Sometimes that helps. They can also um, make their own, uh, answer their own questions on these, uh, on these types of uh, areas so that they understand them better. So all of these things, um, whichever way they learn best, they should start utilizing and hopefully um, they will do well in the ex upcoming exams. Fantastic. So we have learned from the teacher the plan is the first and foremost thing we have to start with. If you have failed to plan, you have if you have fa plan, failed to plan, then you've actually planned to fail. There's a proverb in English. So please do not do that. Planning is the most important thing and, and also procrastination which is delaying in work. Some people are falling into this trap. This is a trap of shaitan. So be caref careful about this procrastination. Oh, I will do that tomorrow or let me do that uh, later on or let me watch this video. This is important. You are actually justified, justifying your own position in order to watch this video or see something. Do not do that. S just say, Astaghfirullah, uh, you know, try to um, and get rid of the shaitan and uh, be firm and stick to the things, uh, to your plans. And hopefully, inshallah, Allah will help you. Be prepared with your uh, resources as much as you have learned, inshallah. Try focusing on learning better things, learning in a better way, apart from learning uh, plenty of things. So as the teacher has said, no more today, inshallah, we will see you. Uh, next uh, week, inshallah, with uh, something uh, better and something uh, good, inshallah. Uh, until then, stay well, and uh, we hope that we uh, must t tell you a, a big jazakumullah as you have uh, joined us uh, with um, uh, so far, in the, although not for this uh, episode today. However, we don't, you know, uh, discourage you for these things. However, if we will uh, encourage that we will uh, hope that you will, uh, inshallah, in the future, join us uh, with more uh, questions. If you have any opinion, you can come up with your opinion. Uh, no more today, inshallah. Jazakumullah, brother, to join us in the uh, show to give us some uh, valid and valuable time. You're welcome. Uh, Thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.